this chapter, we look into how we go about as a manager encouraging our workforce, the individuals, the employees, associates, to have intrinsic motivation, that is to work harder and to do it because they see the value in it in terms of their own individual desires and for, uh, what they're looking for in a job. The most common one that we hear about from psychology is positive reinforcement. Um, this is the practice of rewarding good behavior or acceptable behavior. And it has a tremendous impact on individuals' motivation. When employees are recognized for a job well done, um, they're more likely to put forth the same amount or more, more even effort into the next task they perform and future tasks. In fact, when this is done as a surprise where they're called out and thanked when they really didn't expect it, it has an even stronger impact. Positive reinforcement is so effective because it clearly and immediately defines the specific type of behavior that's appreciated by the employers and which is perceived by the employer to the boss or whatever to have a positive impact on work. The tactic works especially, especially well for employees who naturally take pride in their work and are inherently motivated already to do well. However, it still has positive results even among those who are less naturally motivated, don't necessarily want to be there, but it still has positive effects. Positive reinforcement also empowers employees by building their self-confidence, making them more adaptable and open to change. Another important process is called behavior modification. This is based upon several theories that people use to motivate individuals and developed over several decades. Um, but behavior modification involves changing behavior and encouraging appropriate actions by relating the consequences of behavior to the behavior itself, both positive and negative, so therefore you can modify the behavior. Uh, the concept of behavior modification was developed by the psychologist B.F. Skinner, Skinner, who showed that there are two types of consequences that can modify behavior, reward behavior and punishment behavior, or rewards and punishments. Skinner found that behavior that, re that is rewarded will tend to be repeated, while behavior that is punished will tend to be eliminated. In general, rewarding appropriate behavior is, more effect is a more effective way to modify behavior. One of the reasons for that is oftentimes, even when you're providing punishment, if it's not, if it's punishment of particular types, people actually get attention and they're they're recognized during the for that sort of punishment punishment behavior, and they might therefore confuse it in a sense with a reward and try to get more of that behavior, even though we would think of it as being punishment. It's still recognition of, of sorts. So generally, positive reinforcement is a better way or a safer way to go, although at times uh, co uh, some sort of an enforcement behavior or punishment of some sort is, um, is called for. There, is some, there are some specific ways that, that, that managers and organizations could also motivate individuals. Uh, these are examples on this chart here. Uh, Herzberg, as we talked about, identified the job itself and how the job works and what you're producing has, is a motivational factor in and of itself. Managers have several strategies that they can use to make the jobs or design the jobs so that they actually could improve the employee motivation. One of these is job rotation. That means job head, uh, individuals take several jobs, like in a fast food restaurant, behind a cashier, out in the dining room. Uh, being a cook, whatever, different jobs. So you get a perspective on how everything fits together and you could see better what your part is in the overall effort. Also, it tends to relieve boredom by allowing you to do different things. Um, it also reduces the, uh, the, the, the sense that you're just doing the same thing over and over, the monotony associated with performing one of it in one task. So a greater variety of tasks, rotating among jobs, can be one way that you have greater, um, uh, you can motivate individuals to, to be, to perform uh, better or to have some intrinsic motivation. 
Uh, job enlargement is another one that's giving a particular job more tasks, so you don't just do one thing over and over again, but you do a variety of things even within one task assignment. Um, job enlargement was developed to overcome boredom associated with specialization. And again, the rationality of that is that jobs are more satisfying when there's a number of different things you could do to kind of switch off and things like that, do different things um, over the course of your day. Another um, one here is called uh, job enrichment, which incorporates motivational factors such as opportunity for achievement, uh, recognition, going off for training programs and advancement into a job. Uh, this gives worker not only not only more tasks within the job, but control over the amount of authority they have within the job. They can make some decisions related to their own thing. In some cases, like in a customer service, allowing a certain amount of, of refund to be delivered at the discretion of the agent <clears throat> is a way to motivate people because they feel like you're being trusted and they're part of, uh, of the organization and that, that all works to, their, uh, to, to, the, to motivate them further. So job rotation, job enlargement, job enrichments, there are ways you can design the work environment that actually gives people some additional motivation. Some other things that are done um, to improve motivation is to, it relates to balancing people's lives, their work life with their home life. Many U.S. workers still work or, or work a 40-hour, traditional 40-hour work week, five, eight-hour days, fixed time for starting and ending. Um, this can cause poor morale because it's so routine and high absenteeism, particularly when there's other responsibilities that they're trying to deal with. Um, diverse workforces can have uh, responsibilities during the day that they have to deal with. This allows for what's called flexible scheduling strategies. One of these is flex time, which allows employees to choose their own starting and ending times as long as they work the full amount that's needed during a core period. Um, it doesn't reduce the total amount of time worked, but it allows the employee to be more flexible in terms of the time they spend at the job so they can take care of some of their other responsibilities as well. It gives them some flexibility. Um, another thing that's related to that is what's called a compressed work week. That can be a four hour or even shorter work week because you still get your 40 hours. You just work 10 hours a day instead. Um, one of my uh, brothers-in-law worked for years in a firm that um, allowed them on Fridays during the summer off because they'd work 10 hours for four days a week so all summer they had Fridays off. They still get their 40 hours in but they um, they get a three-day weekend at least during the summer in the case of my brother-in-law. So that's some uh, some other things that one can do. Flex time allows uh, benefits including improving the ability for you to recruit employees. Certain people that would be restricted because of their other responsibilities can now join the work crew. Um, they might wish to balance their life and you bring them on board. That makes everyone feel happier that they're not giving up some important personal responsibilities to be at, at the job. Uh, more flexible schedules generally can be are associated with a better a healthier lifestyle choices people have more physical do more physical activity maybe they need to work out or get to the gym at certain times and you can match those things together so that's an example of how creating an, an environment where work is a place people want to be and they enjoy what they're doing in their job creates this sense of um, of intrinsic motivation, internal motivation. This is back again, in a sense, to the theory why. If people want to do good work and they know what they're supposed to do, uh, you can get a lot of, uh, of, of things done in that environment. Another one is uh, job sharing, which sometimes allows one full-time job to be filled with two part-time persons. Um, two people, maybe somebody's in the mornings and someone else is in the afternoons, or somebody's three days a week, someone else is two days a week. Uh, those kinds of things. Um, for a more specific example, someone comes in at 8 o'clock and they go home at 12.30. The other person comes in at 12.30, goes home at 5. That's the kind of thing that's meant by job sharing. Not all businesses allow this, but many do. Um, increasingly, these kind of schedules um, allow, allow uh, full-time, part-time work, full-time workers to continue working if they go to part-time. 
uh, because of other responsibilities or just because that's what they're trying to do. Um, employees in some firms work part-time for several months, maybe taking for childcare or elderly parent, that sort of thing, and then come back full-time um, recharged and and work there go back to a full-time management but these are different ways that you make it make the organ make the person feel and you know, they actually are appreciated by the organization their work is appreciated and so you make some accommodations to people's needs and desires and that's uh, that's one way to do that although you know like I said there's also situations where organizations just don't or don't feel like their work uh, matches this kind of a, of a lifestyle other people work from home with telecommuting and um, using phones and video and those sorts of things um, that could increase it that could cause a decrease in stress you don't have as much commuting time it also can actually save office space in some situations different different techniques to create an environment where people are valued and they feel valued and therefore they work hard and they work hard to achieve the objectives of the organization. You don't necessarily have to tell them everything you need to do. They know and they want to do it because they like what they do. Several companies that are listed on Fortune, Fortune's best companies to work for received recognition for how well they treat their employees. Good treatment of employees leads to, as we were talking about, highly motivated employees, happy employees. Uh, SAS is a business analytics company. It was in the number two spot in Fortune's list in 2014. They motivate their employees with extensive benefits beyond what's traditional. Uh, they also value their, value their employees' families, offering full family health care coverage, educational training, and those sorts of things. Um, they offer fitness centers, recreational facilities, and that sort of thing for their employees. So companies are out there that are trying to, that are taking advantage of all this research that we have about what motivates people intrinsically and try to provide those. Of course, one always has to work on making sure that you, that there aren't people that are taking advantage of that system. But as long as the framing is right and the people are, um, are, are screened and, and there's enough, uh, enough of a management there and the objectives of the firm are clearly understood. Uh, these things could work extremely well. Um, in the next lecture, we'll talk about some additional motivational strategies.